Welcome to Thompson Field in Blacksburg, Virginia for a great game between the Virginia Tech Hokies and the Alabama Crimson Tide. I'm Jake Lyman. To my right is Tyler Katz for 3304 Sports. And Tyler, tonight we see the Hokies and Crimson Tide face off for just the second time in school history. Last year, Hokies went down to Tuscaloosa and came up just short early in the season. We mentioned Purdue had to close quickly on those shooters. A good job by Farquhar there. She'll hand it back to Odin, who stands at the free throw line. McLaughlin from just inside the three-point line. A little long with that one. Kitley controls the board. Cole speeding across half court. Drives to the baseline, now pulls it back out. Mabry on the right wing, coming across the Carillion Cl Clinic logo, now drives up with the right hand, gets it to Kitley in. Great feed there by Mabry. Took the entire defense over to the left side and then kicked at the last second for a great lay-in. Elizabeth Kitley with the first four for the Hokies. Trailer in the right corner. Foul away from the, from the ball. Looks like that one's going to be on Kitley. Kitley getting a little physical with Ariana Harris down low on the block. And that'll be the second foul on the Hokies here in the first quarter. Just over two minutes gone. Four to two, Virginia Tech. McLaughlin in the right corner. Now finds the point guard trailer. Cole guarding her tightly. Backs it out. Good pressure here by Cole. Lost her dribble. Cole takes it away, but a foul on trailer will end the fast break opportunity. Phenomenal defense by Cole at the top of the key. You said it right at the start of, of the possession. She was guarding the Boilermaker super, super tight, step for step, and did a great job forcing that foul on what could have been an easy lane. Cole suffocating defense. And now we'll see Lydia Rivers check out for the Hokies. Trinity Baptiste will check in. She's had a good run of it lately. Has started every game and now averaging over 10 points a game. Had 10 points and 11 and a half rebounds per game down in Daytona. Trinity Baptiste has been playing well. That was her, the Hokies' very first double-double of the season. So good to see her again on the boards. Trying to have a productive evening today. Hokies moving it around the perimeter. Shot from Shepard, no good. Purdue grabs the rebound. Trailer will speed it across the timeline. Works it down low to Harris and a travel. Too many steps there from Harris as she tried to work against Trinity Baptiste. Going to be a turnover for the Boilermakers. Hokies doing a really good job so far of playing fairly tight defense down low for a team that has some height with the Boilermakers. They're really doing a good job of bottling up and forcing them into uh, making some ticky-tacky turnovers. Roxanne McCullough will check in for the first time. Trailer will check out. Cole brings it across half court. Holds on the Carillion Clinic logo. Now finds Kitley. Outside the three-point line, back to Shepard. Shepard at the top of the key. Lob pass down low to Kitley. Too far for her. Can't bring it in. That's going to be a turnover. Slightly too far on the pass by Shepard. They've really been running the uh, offense through Kitley so far, so just trying to go back at it. Get her some, some good looks down low. Just under... Just over three minutes gone. Four to two, Hokies still our score. Farquhar on the right wing. Now down to the block to Odin. Knocked up in the air, but controlled by Harris. Purdue will keep it, 14 on the shot clock. McLaughlin working against Mabry. Odin against Shepard gets a screen from Harris, moving towards that left wing. McColo inside to Farquhar, three on the shot clock. Tossed, did she get it off in time? Yes, but no good. Down low, McColo couldn't get it to go. Cole's going to drive. Now kicks it back out to Shepard. No chance for the three. Tries to drive it. Loses control. Harris grabs it. Up ahead to Odin. And gets the fast break layup. Tied up at four with six minutes left in the first quarter. Great defense right there by, by the Boilermakers. Shepard is such a dynamic part of this Hokies offense. Forcing the turnover again. An easy land. Uh, not this game up at four. Dara Mabry takes the handoff from Cole now. Swings it around to Kitley in the left corner. Mabry at the top of the key, chance for three, fires it, good. Dara Mabry from the top of the key, staying hot from what she did against Georgia, six of nine in that game, knocks the, her first one down today, 7-4 Hokies. Welcome into the Dome in Bluefield, Virginia, where today the Bluefield Rams finish off their college season with a rivalry game against the Bluefield State Lady Blues. Bluefield comes into this game with an 11-20 record, 9-11 in the AAC, while the Blues enter today's game having lost every single game this season, 0-17. They have yet, they have only won one set 
on the season. Bluefield coming in on senior night, trying to send the seniors off with a win. Six seniors on the volleyball team were honored tonight, along with cross country seniors here at Bluefield. A couple on the men's and women's team were getting ready to go here. Buddy Gallimore's Rams trying to bounce back after losing their last one last Tuesday to Kentucky Christian in straight sets. Leslie Flores in that game led the way with nine kills and 13 digs. And we are underway. Kaylee Kay sends it over the net and an error there by Danielle Baker. Puts Bluefield on the board first, one to nothing. Kaylee Kay, one of the seniors recognized tonight. Her service over the net. Dug out the set there from Fulp. And a kill. That's Raynell Crenshaw, the junior local here to Bluefield. Evens it up at one. The service. Set from Kendrick. Over by Holloway. Dug out, but not going to get over the net for Bluefield State. Bluefield retakes the lead 2-1 to one here in the first set. Bluefield trying to reach 12 wins for the fifth straight year. Buddy Gallimore has not had under 12 wins in his five years here in Bluefield. Sent over on the third touch. Kay puts it up. The set from Kendrick over by Holloway, and that's going to be a kill. Holloway, excuse me. That's Kaylee Barker, the senior. Barker with the kill there. The assist from Kendrick. Service there from Phipps. Going to put Bluefield up 4-1 to one now. Whitley Phipps from Saudi Daisy, Tennessee. Same high school as Kane Brown, country singer. Sent over by the Blues. Kendrick sets it back. Kay sends it over. Fannin takes it out, sent back over by Fulp. Kendrick sets it up, and the kill. Taylor Sutherland able to finish that one. And now five to one, Bluefield. Bluefield State, like I mentioned, has only won one set this year. As it'll be Baker sending it over. Kendrick, Barker able to get another kill. Kaylee Barker looking strong early on the attack. And a timeout from Bluefield State. Back here for the bottom of the ninth in Lorton. Noah Short on for the aces in relief of Hugh O'Hara. The West Virginia Mountaineer so far has appeared in 10 games. Has an ERA right around six and a half and has a one in four record on the year. When he's gotten decisions, it has not gone well. First pitch to Charlie Ludwig is high. That's ball four. That walk will be attributed to Hugh O'Hara and will bring the tying run to the plate in the form of Ben Blackwell. We saw Jimmy Losh hit his first home run of the year earlier in this game. Ben Blackwell doesn't have one this season. Wow, Andy, would this be a great time for him to hit one? It would be. It would tie things up at six apiece, and with zero outs, the Braves are looking to maybe even grab the win if that scenario was to happen for FCA, but still zero outs on the board for the Aces. They're going to have to get one on quick if they're going to feel confident about maybe pulling this one off. First pitch misses to Blackwell. We said Pujols would be subbed out for Schaub. That was when Hugh O'Hara, the lefty, was in. Now with a righty in short in the game. Pujols will be coming back out for his fourth plate appearance of the day after Blackwell's at bat here. He's in the on-deck circle. 1-1 count. Short working from the stretch. Comes set and fires. That's going to be a little high. 2-1. Braves have been working the count here, have reached on two walks in a row to start the bottom of the ninth. 6-3, aces lead. 
winner moves on to the league semifinals. When it was 6 nothing in the bottom of the seventh, didn't think there would be this much drama, but the Braves showing the fight that they have. 2-1 pitch misses high again. 3-1, short one pitch away from walking the bases loaded for Marcos Pools, who could end it with one swing of the bat. Definitely getting interesting here, Jake. It's going to be something to look out for. 3-1 pitch, high and inside. Ball four, bases loaded. The game-winning run is at the plate. And I think when you look at pure power in this Braves order, there's no one you want up when a home run would win it than Marcos Pujols. Noah Short wants to talk with Eric Bolton quickly before this at-bat. Pujols, a dangerous hitter. When he gets around on these pitches, they don't come back too often. Only has three home runs on the year, but we've seen him countless times hit balls just foul or hit balls the other way that come up feet away from being a home run. Pools, would you agree with me, Andy, that when you talk about powerful hitters, Pools is probably the most powerful on the team despite not having the most home runs? I definitely think that he's up there at the top of where it becomes powerful hitters for the team. Pools has three home runs, 10 RBIs on the year, batting right around 250. Today, he is 0 for 3 with two strikeouts, a big hack at the first pitch from short and a miss. Bases loaded, no outs for the Braves, trailing by three in the bottom of the ninth of this elimination game. We saw our first Grand Slam of the season yesterday, Jake. What a walk-off Grand Slam that would be. 0-1 in the dirt for ball one. Check swing. Did he go? No. The appeal says that Pujols held back. So we'll go even at 1-1. One one. Ryan Marash on deck. Pujols back in the box. Ready for the 1-1 one, one from short. Hit out to right center field. It's shallow. Coming in his field. Will he make the play? Yes, he will. Tagging from third is Losh, he will score and cut it to a two-run game. Pools with the sack fly. That one looked a lot harder from where we're sitting than it actually was. Fields actually haven't come in on that. When I saw it off the bat, I thought we might actually have what we were talking about, a walk-off grand slam, but got it off the end of the bat, it seems, and that'll be the first out. Runners on first and second. Morash, the game-winning run, now at the plate. Yeah, it's unfortunate right there that Marcus Pujols couldn't put that one in the field, but still taking that RBI when you have an opportunity. And for the Aces, it actually probably works out in their favor more now that the Ludwig and Blackwell did not tag. It keeps the double play and force out at third, second, and first. 1-0 pitch to Morash, fouled back in a 1-1 count, yeah. Double play still in order. Marash is speedy out of the box, but it if he hits one hard here on the ground in the infield, that could be it for the Braves. Aces definitely going to keep the ball low here in this at-bat, trying to induce that game-ending double play. 1-1 one, one pitch, breaking ball, unable to find that strike zone. Look for the backdoor curveball. Couldn't get it in. You can't make moments like this up, Jake. It's... They're very unscripted right now. It's anything can really go any way for any team. 2-1 pitch. Fouled off by Morash. Looked like that one may have been off the outside corner, but Morash reaching out, fouling it off. Now in a two-strike count. But it's good for Morash to really be swinging anything close to the zone. Do you rather foul off a 2-1 pitch than watch a 2-1 pitch hit the outside portion of the strike zone? It makes you feel that you know you can reach out to any pitch that Short's going to throw in the zone. You only get three chances. Don't want to let any of them go by here in this situation. 2-2 two -two pitch. Inside curveball, but fouled off by Morash. Stays alive at 2-2. Two two. Man, he got really under that one right there, Jake. That one was just launched off the bat, but got under it right there. So I have seen a breaking ball right there. And she's going to see what he's going to do with the 2-2 two -two pitch. It's definitely the advantage for short right now. So it's whatever he wants to throw and if he can hit it. 2-2 pitch again. That one's away. It's going to get by the catcher, Bolton. Both runners advancing. The throw to second. 
is not in time. McKenzie can't handle it. Both runners move up, and the tying run is in scoring position. This has gotten real out here in Lorton as this game looked like the aces to lose, and that's exactly what they may do here. The tying run in scoring position in the form of Ben Blackwell. Full count pitch coming to Ryan Marash. Yeah, it's a good wild pitch in the favor of the Braves. But Ben Blackwell and Charlie Ludwig were so late on if they wanted to go or not. They understand that they don't want to be tagged out on attempted steal. Blackwell was inches away from being tagged out. 3-2 pitch. Swung and missed by Ryan Marash is the second out. Braves down to their final out of the season. But a base hit would almost definitely tie this game up. And the task will fall on Wesley Lane, the nine hitter tonight. He's one for two tonight with a walk and a run scored. Wesley Lane may have been maybe one of the hottest hitters on this team right now. He's up in a huge spot facing Noah Short, who seems to have struggled finding the strike zone there. Got the strikeout, but Morash kind of reaching on some of those pitches may have helped him out. Right now here for Lane, I was mentioning about how many times he was striking out compared to his at-bats, but you're right, he's been hot as of lately. 1-0, swung on and missed, even at 1-1. One one. It's so funny, our last two meet the Braves right now, playing so much, really big roles. Ludwig is on at third base and Lane's in the batter's box. 1-1, one one. high and away, but swung on and missed by Lane. The Braves down to their final strike of the season. Blackwell on second. Ludwig on third. Two outs, bottom of the ninth. 6-4 game. The Aces lead in this one-game elimination playoff. 1-2 pitch right down the middle for strike three. The Braves fall tonight 6-4, to four, and their season will end on the upset by the Aces, the number six seed knocking off the number three seed. The Aces will move on to face the big train at Shirley Povich tomorrow night. Virginia Tech will be back in Castle Coliseum on Sunday at 2 p.m. to face Gardner-Webb in their last game before they head to Puerto Rico for another early season tournament. Evan Hughes, Kevin Domenico will be on the call. We'll hope you all tune in. Once again, Hokies win 67-54 over Purdue here at Castle Coliseum.